Well, good morning. Good Tuesday morning. Uh, it's early this morning. Boy, I'm tired, but it's one of those wonderful days that uh, the weather's got a little bit warmer and able to do a lot of outside things. Yesterday, able to do a lot of outside work at my house, uh, raking my leaves, my neighbor's leaves on each side of my house, uh, trying to help uh, get those wet leaves out of there so that uh, the yards look nicer and, ooh, they look nice. Except all the trees kept raining down leaves. So uh, I'd say I've got about 95% of the leaves all raked up and about 5% came down new yesterday. But uh, hey, that's just what it is living in this world we have. With thorns and thistles, we have to the joy or the uh, frustration of raking leaves. But you know, God's creation is so beautiful. That even with the uh, leaves that we have to pile up and uh, the garbage men take away, we still get to enjoy such a beautiful place. And Pasadena truly is a beautiful place. <sighs> Today's devotion is one that I pulled out of uh, Losing Our Ministries. Uh, it was one that they shared uh, yesterday. Uh, one that I thought was a helpful one. As we are getting towards Christmas, since we're in the season of Advent, we have uh, the uh, planning for our Savior's celebration of his birth. And with that, Matthew's Gospel begins with his genealogy. Uh, and so the devotion today is called, Who Are You? Who Are You? Now, I got to say, genealogy is a very important thing. In our world today, we have all these different, uh, you know, online-based things where you can take a swab of your DNA out of your mouth, uh, uh, some skin cells, if you will. They'll do a little uh, exam on those, and then you'll be able to find out where you genealogy dates back to. And the, uh, the question is, well, are you really who you thought you were? And maybe uh, who do, would you say that you are now because of that? Um, you know, if you realize that uh, you thought you had maybe a little bit of Italian in you, a little bit of Chinese in you, and then you realize, oh, no, I actually, my all my ancestry uh, comes from, say, uh, you know, Northern Europe or something, uh, whatever it might be, you, you might be rudely uh, surprised or you might be pleasantly uh, uh, reaffirmed in who you are. Now, what does that mean about our ancestry, about who we are? Well, one thing we got to remember is that as Christians, we have been reborn, we have given a new identity in Christ. And so there's some joy there in the fact that when we do look at who we are, it is looking at us sometimes genetically. We realize we're much more than just our genetic show, much more than what our uh, pedigree might uh, list out. But I'm gonna begin with the, uh, the genealogy of Jesus. I'm gonna share a couple of examples here. Uh, so the book, this is from Matthew chapter one, verses uh, one, two, and then 15 and 16. It begins by saying in the New Testament, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brothers, and Eliud the father of Eliezer, and Eliezer the father of Mathan, and Mathan the father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who was called Christ. There's a, I know I left out a number of verses there because there's a lot of names kind of get lost in the, uh, in the uh, series of names and I don't want to go through all of them right now. But when you have that idea, I think, you know, tell me about your family. Many of you know I'm a fifth generation pastor. Uh, how do I know that? Because that's what my father told me. He was fourth generation. Grandfather, you're third generation. Uh, so we know that. What does it mean about me genetically? Well, it means I have a lot of German in me. Um, but I'm not going to go through all those other things to find out my pedigree or my uh, DNA makeup. No, I know who I am. I know who my father was, the one who raised me. I know who my mother is. She uh, uh, is the one who was there to care for me. I know who I am in Christ today. I know my family, uh, biologically speaking, as well as spiritually speaking, uh, is beautiful and wonderful. But when we want to know about someone's family, it's because we want to get to know someone. We Now, what can we learn about Jesus from his ancestors? Oh, that's the interesting question today. I'm not here talking about me or talking about like, you know, DNA me or 20, 23.com or whatever, but what can we learn about Jesus from his ancestors? That's probably the bigger question, especially because we're in Advent. Uh, let's start with Abraham. He's referenced as being a friend of God who left his family to go wherever God would send him. Now, he's a man that would be one of great faith. Yes, but he abandoned his own son, Ishmael, in the desert and allowed his wife, Sarah, to take, be taken into another man's harem in order to save his life. That's the stories of Pharaoh and all. Now, Isaac, what do we know about him? Well, we honor him as a young man who was willing to lay down his life, if necessary, at God's testing. Uh, we also know that he also was a father who played favorites. 
and set his sons up to be enemies for years, many years. Now Jacob, he was a man who tried to cheat his way through life. The only way, only one to realize this was in the end that God is the one who would give him help in every good thing. Now we don't have to run through all of Jesus' ancestors. Like I said, I didn't read all of these verses here, but you do recall there was ancestors like David. He was a faithful king, right? But also an adulterer and a murderer. There was Rahab. She was a prostitute who saved Israel's spies. There was faithful King Hezekiah who fathered Manasseh, who offered his child as a human sacrifice. You see, good and evil, faith and faithlessness appear on every level of Jesus' family tree. And isn't that the way it should be for someone who came to save all of us? Jesus' ancestors are just like us. They're not all perfect, like righteous and holy. No, they are a mixture of good and evil. And we cry out for a savior to help us because we too are mixtures of good and evil. And so that means that God, he sent his son. He heard his cry. He heard our cry. And through Jesus, he shows us mercy, love, and forgiveness. And so the beauty of looking back at the genealogy of Jesus is to realize that he comes through a checkered genealogy, just like many of us do that he has a myriad of people in his ancestry, and therefore he came to save all of us. The good, the bad, the ugly, the ones who are horrible sinners, the ones that are maybe not as significant, as strong as sinners, and those who are still, don't even know who God is, he came to die for all, to redeem all and bring all back to his heavenly Father. And so as we consider at this Advent season, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Maybe a, a little extra nuance is to realize that his, his uh, lineage is one that is filled with all sorts of different people, kings and prostitutes. Uh, you got murderers, adulterers, and everything in between. Those who are men of great faith and those who are ones that uh, are faithless often. And yet through them all, God shows grace. God shows mercy. He shows love to you, to me, as sinners as we are, as good and evil and bad and wrong as we are. And so we look at our ancestry in this life and realize it is kind of a mess. Maybe the, the, the things that we thought we knew maybe are not always accurate. The things we do know maybe resubstantiated. But the bigger message here is that our God comes to save us all. He comes to love us all. His grace is beyond anything we could ever imagine. For he sees through all the, the goods, the bads, the yuggies. He sees through all the, uh, the genealogy and simply says, I love you. I love you. So as we close in on Christmas, let that be a reminder to you. The God who comes to be born, take on flesh, become incarnate, through a young teenage girl, a virgin, with a very checkered past, along with her husband with a very checkered past, that is able to bring about our salvation. May that be something that encourages you to stay. And also one that goes, send you out to go share with others. The joy of knowing a God who loves you more than anything else and doesn't look at your past, rather looks at you and his son, Jesus. For that's our identity and now is we are Christ, Christians. So I could say I'm a helper, but more so, I'm a Christian, and you are too. Let's close our time in prayer. We pray, come, Lord Jesus, to be Savior of us all. Help us to find our peace, our hope, our identity, our life in you. Amen. Well, thanks for joining me this morning. Uh, maybe try to get some rest or not, but uh, have a wonderful day in the Lord. And remember, we have services on Wednesday at noon and seven. We're gonna be focusing on the life of Isaiah. And we're also gonna be having uh, uh, services this next weekend. And if you haven't, uh, weren't aware, we're also doing caroling. Uh, youth of all ages are doing caroling. We're gonna have in our Saint School Children's Christmas program in two weeks. We have a lot going on. So check out the email blast that goes out tomorrow morning. Sorry, not tomorrow morning, this morning. I'm losing it. And uh, be able to keep apprised of what everything that there is. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. Know that I love you and aloha.